Welcome back to another episode of the ABL Review. I'm Jeremy Lysak. I'm here with uh, the semifinals for the North Division in Season 21. So we can hop right into the games here. Leading off, we've got Zach taking on Dakota. Um, so, you know what? Let's let's just go into it. We can talk about the kind of the state of the meta right now. So, unfortunate Thunder Wave miss. Definitely would have bought Dakota some turns later in this battle because we do see Tyrantar sticks around for quite some time. Um, we see Mudsdale come in, get the stamina boost, uh, knocks off the assault vest. Now, uh, crit, I, I, I'm going to say the crit doesn't matter. Um, just based on how much damage that was doing, it doesn't matter at all. If he'd gotten frozen, different, different matter entirely. Um, Dakota goes for an earthquake here. I bet you, and he really wishes he had that one back. Body press obviously would have KO'd this Tyranitar, which means that the Houndstone would have also been, uh, neutralized a bit. During this game, let me see how I can... Looks a little weird here. Let me just readjust that just slightly. Um, so, goes for the Earthquake there, which is going to allow this Mudsail then get taken out. Um, kind of would have been a one-for-one. One. I think Dakota would have been, been in a better spot. We see this Weavile come and immediately take Rock's damage. That's kind of a red flag. Um, just, eh, not red flag, that's not the right word. That's a problem, let's just say, due to the fact that there doesn't appear to be any hazard clearing on Dakota's team. And Weavile is likely choiced if it's not um, Heavy Duty Boots. Uh, which means it's going to really have to make the most of its time on the field. Especially with Sandstorm. Actually, the Sandstorm is going to end this turn. So I don't think it's going to have to take any... I don't think it's going to get buffeted. But um, it's going to have to make the most of its time on the field. Because best case scenario, it's going to have like five attacks that it can fire off. So really needs to take advantage of all its opportunities it's got. We're gonna see the Hisuian Samrock come out. Um, and takes 49%, gets back up to 57. Um, it's gonna force out the Weavile, so he's gonna have to take that damage again, unfortunately. And even worse for him is that the Ceaseless Edge is gonna set up the spikes, which look, that now that Weavile's down to 38%, so what's that? It's taken every time it comes in, it's taken 37% damage. That means it's gonna only come in one more time. Um, and we just have this Volt Switch on the Raging Bolt as the Weavile comes out, which is kind of a bad spot for the Weavile to be in, because it can't really... It's hard for it to go for an Ice move, because if it goes for an Ice move and this goes for... Um, what's that called? Uh, Thunderclap. Weavile's gone. Um, if it goes for an Ice Shard, like that'll do some damage, but I, th I think this Raging Bolt probably could have afforded to stay in, but uh, he doesn't bother... Um, he's going to go out into the Hisuian Samurott, not take much damage, and this is going to give Hisuian Samurott an opportunity, if he wants to, to go ahead and set up more spikes via Ceaseless Edge. He's just going to go for the Aqua Jet, try to get some chip damage. He's going to get Rocky Helmeted for his trouble. Weezing's going to come out with a Neutralizing Gas. Now, this is presumably to make sure Monkey Dory can't poison things, or um, maybe the Houndstone can't go too fast to Sand Rush, maybe keep Sand off the field. Not really sure why the neutralizing gas, and I bet you Dakota regrets it after seeing how the rest of this game goes. Um, Registeel's going to come in. It's already going to start to rack up some damage between that Thunderbolt, which did a lot, and then also the hazards are just kind of cheese grating this team down. Um, we saw this in battles in the south, and this is just becoming standard practice, right? Um, so we see the uh, full compl or nearly the full, no, full complements of spikes go up there. Um, Bad news for Dakota, because um, like I said, he's got no way to remove this. And actually, at this point, Weavile's already dead. Weavile can't come in. Um, the Weezing's going to be coming in at pretty low health. Green Marina is also going to be coming in at quite low health as well, uh, all things considered. Um, so Rotom's, Rotom is the only thing that is wearing Heavy Duty, so it's not taking any damage. The Monkey Dory's going to come in. That's going to be a problem for him. Dakota with a big balls play and just staying in, eating the U-turn. Um, that's a big deal for him. Like, he needs he needs as much momentum as he can get, seeing as how he needs to make the most of his moves. Uh, HP doesn't matter as much on Rotom as the other things, because it can switch in with a lot more impunity. So we got the Pre-Marina coming in here. And uh, unfortunately falls to the Thunderclap from Raging Bolt. Um, Dakota's really just into two usable Pokemon, because that Weavile he can use as a sack, but in terms of Pokemon that can actually fire off moves, uh, Slim Pickens, okay? So we get the Rotom coming out, 
Serena's going to come in there. Pain split. Very good call. A lot more health on the Rotom. Uh, makes that U-turn it took from Monkey Door seem even more worth it. Um, at this point, can't really risk any more here. He's going to sack the Weavile, see what this Monkey Door locks itself into. Dakota inferred that this is likely choice due to the fact that it has U-turn. If it's another set, probably won't have U-turn, but I think this is a good assumption to make, seeing as how it's the only assumption that he can really act on. So see that he's locked himself into Psychic. He's going to come in and unfortunately take quite a bit of damage. Um, he's going to terrestrialize Dark. Great call. <clears throat> um, I, I, I updated that, right? Uh, uh. Yeah, okay, that's good, that's good, we're good. I had a, I had a concern, that's the next match. Um, I had a concern all of a sudden there, that was just like, ooh, what if I didn't update it and Zach had to, didn't predict the dark type because of that. Um, but he is going to be able to be dark type, and he's going to get off Shadow Ball and nearly KO the Monkey Dory. Effectively KO the Monkey Dory, though, because the Monkey Dory can't come back in because it'll die on hazards. Um, assuming the Serena isn't able to come in and rapid spin, that's kind of a big if, especially because... We don't even get that. We see the Tyranitar come in. Um, he obviously tried to burn it here. He does get the burn here. If he had had it the turn before, uh, I guess it doesn't make too much of a difference, right? Um, it'd just be a little bit closer battle there. Uh, so the Sand is going to go up. Rotom's going to come out. He's just going to go for the Volt Switch because it's his best attacking move to really go for. And Houndstone's going to come out. Terra Ghost, Shadow Sneak. Didn't need to do all that stuff just to pick up the KO. But, you know, why not at this point? You, you don't get to see Houndstone hit the field too often. So, um, Zach walks away with a win, bringing the Dallas Drills in their, you know, in their, their inaugural season uh, team back in Dallas. Man, Dallas has really been struggling for championship teams there throughout the history of the ABL, right? Um, first season of the Drills, able to bring them back to a championship. Uh, and that leads on to our next match. No marquee match of the week, really, because there's only two matches... Um, I think they were both pretty good. I think this one's a bit closer. That's why I'm, I'm anchoring with it. Um, man, I'm working up a sneeze here, but it's not quite coming. But um, in the meantime, let's hop into the battle. We'll just surprise you with the sneeze halfway through the video, probably. So we get Zapdos versus Overclose the lead. Um, pretty aggressive play by uh, Brett there to go ahead and try to set up the spikes against a Magic Bouncer. It doesn't end up working out. It's going to go for the crunch. Uh, you know, decent damage on the Heatran. Magma Storm comes out. I was so... I thought it would have been so fucking cool to see this Heatran go for Taunt and shut down the Chili Reception, thus trapping the Slowking. I thought that would have been so cool. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't happen. We're just going to go hard into Dusclops on the Scald. Um, uh, Overquill's going to come out here. Just intimidate the Dusclops. Not really to any avail. Overquill mostly is here to just be a dark type, so that way its psychic moves can't get fired off. Um, and hopefully get up hazards here and there. That's the goal of Overquill in this one, right? Um, so, it being burned is not the end of the world. Um, it would have been cool if it got the poison on Espeon, because it does have a chance to do that. Uh, Crunch is obviously going to be doing a lot less damage just due to the burn and the reflect. Um, big play by Espeon there to get that up. Another Barb Barrage blocked by Heatran. Now, Brett's really going to try to get back in this. He's going to try to start getting up spikes as the Heatran gets up his own hazards. Hazards are the name of the game here. Um, and after seeing that, he was able to get up one thing of spikes. Didn't want to get greedy, went for the crunch. That's a very that's a veteran play there. Just like, you know what, snuck one in. Let's not get greedy. Let's just uh, continue on the... Uh, let's let's go, go back to basics, right? Gets off the crunch, more damage on SPN, and gets the defense drop. Interesting call here. Go for the baton pass and pass the defense drop into Heatran. Not that it made a difference in terms of how much damage it took, because it would have taken like 4% damage instead of 6. But he does pass a defense drop, which is kind of a funny thing to have happen. Um, Yeah, sneaks in another uh, spike there. Able to take the Earth Power. I mean, Overquill at this point has done most of its job. Like... Espeon's going to come back in and only be at like 4%, kind of worth it. Um, I think this might be the point where... Um, this might be the point where Brett wishes he had a turn back. Because I think... I think this is the right call to try to do what he did here. 
but I think if he had been able to go back in time and make another play, he wouldn't have rapid spun here with Regilecki. I think he just would have volt switched and found a different way to do stuff. Um, because just pain split and th like pain split is just not going to be able to take down this dust cloud, especially after the trick room goes up. It's just going to be able to stay healthy. He's not going to be able to rapid spin. Um, like if he had done like a big brain play and rapid spun there, amazing. But um, it didn't end up working out. We're going to see Ursaluna come in on this triple arrows. Uh, not able to get the KO. Sucker Punch probably out slowing if this is built for trick room that he's suing Decidueye. Out slowing the um, potential vacuum wave on Ursaluna. Or even just if it's just a slow Ursaluna anyways. Um... Maybe it was built for Trick Room. Just Sucker Punch to be the safest possible option to take out that Ursaluna. Very smart there. Um, Regilecki is going to get Sucker Punch down. Probably is just trying to Rapid Spin again. Ogre Pond is going to come in. Uh, Ivy Cudgel not able to pick up the KO. I, at this point, Brett's making some hard predictions trying to get back in this game. Um, and a dual wing beat comes out for, from Hisuian Decidueye. Awesome gameplay there. Really good set. Like, this is... This is a Franken set here, and it really comes through. Going to see Suing or uh, Sloking come out, able to live the knockoff, and Chili Reception out sets up Bear Tick. Now Bear Tick's going to come in. He's going to have um, five turns to work with and six Pokemon to try to take out. Going to be tough. Um, so let's let's see how he does. Right. So Terrestrialized Dark type. Resist the Sucker Punch, get off the Ice Kill Spear, down goes Suing Decidueye. Um, Ogre Pond Wellspring is going to come in. Thankfully, he took that Rocks damage, because this Ice Kill Spear, along with that Rocks damage, is going to be able to take out the uh, Ogre Pond. Now we got the Dusclops coming in. Very low health. Um, we see it Terrestrialize Dark. We know he's not going to be able to take a hit, but this is just a matter of Drew surviving as many turns as possible, which will give him the opportunity to come in and clean up at the end of this, right? Goes into Espeon as it faints to the Terra Blast. Heatran's going to come in. You sack the Dust Clops. That way the Heatran's still safe. Um, that's also really big because if he had managed to hit that Trailblaze, um, then even when the snow ends, he's going to be faster than everything. That was such a big turn right there. Brett, if... Like, even if he had, if, if Heatran had stayed in, if he's just like, okay, look, I only need one turn to be faster than the Bear Tick, I can sack the Heatran to an Earthquake or a Close Combat or something like that. If he had done that, and this Trailblaze, and Heatran had taken a Trailblaze, um, and then not killed the Bear Tick, then Brett wins from there. So close here at the end. Like, that, that... That is the best way to use a sack. Actually, we've seen two in the north here. We've seen two good uses of sack, sacks. Um, Dakota sack and the Weavile to see what the Monkey Dory was going to lock itself into, and then this inadvertently, I think. I don't think he predicted Trailblaze, but blocking the Trailblaze worked out perfectly. Um, unfortunately uh, for Brett, uh, the Hurricane is going to hit. We've seen a lot of Hurricanes hit this week. Um, and then the Zapdos is just going to be able to go ahead and clean up. Really well played by Drew. Totally a deserved win there. Um, I really don't think Brett made any really dumb decisions. I think it was kind of 50-50s that ended up not being the right way to go. Um, just, but really well played by both these guys. Uh, Darren's first trip to the, to the finals. Um, started out in the south and has just really been impressing ever since then. So, well done. Very excited for... Oh, wait. I, I, Drew. I wonder if I've been calling him Darren this whole time. If I have, I'm sorry. That's... that's a, I, I, I know there's a difference. I just recorded the South, and I talked about Darren a bunch in there. So, sorry if I messed it up. But Drew and the Detroit Steel Wings is, are going to the finals. Um, going to play Zach. Very exciting. Um... Rooting for you there. Uh, and also, it is um, kind of reminiscent of... Did Darren play Zach in the finals when Darren won the championship? I think so. So I'm going to, you know... I'm going to take a little bit more heat off myself for messing that up. Let's go Let's go take a look at the north. Um, so, neither of these guys made any changes to their, um, to their terrace. I don't even know if 
Zach made any changes to his entire team all season. I know he didn't make any ad drops. I don't think he ever changed his Terras. I think he might have now that but, uh, not super important. Um Drew, I think for the second season in a row, never changed a single thing about his team. Um You know, these guys just kind of know what works for them and they lock in and uh and, and they make the team work. So good for them. Really looking forward to this battle. Um, so next week, uh, we're not going to have coverage of the North or so we're going to have coverage of the North. We're going to have finals coverage of the North semifinals coverage for the South. Then we'll wrap up with South finals coverage two weeks from now. That'll wrap up the season and we'll kind of take a look forward at what's going on for the league, uh, moving forward. Uh, if you guys have people who are interested in joining the league, no, so that way we just kind of make some preparations for uh, for season 22 when it arrives. If you guys have any ideas for any off-season things you like to you would like to do, also please discuss those and get those ideas to me. We can start setting that up. Um, I don't know how chomping at the bit people are to go in for another season, um, just because there's not going to be a ton of change other than just a couple of realignments to the divisions, probably some tweaks to the uh, the draft board. So, yeah, please get back to me. Um, again, thank you all for your support. Thank you, everyone, for taking care of stuff in the in the dock. I really appreciate it. Uh, I've been swamped, and I'm sorry. I've kind of been letting things slip. Uh, but I look forward to another, another week of this. I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.